Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. It's BMW Dr. Dean here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use Ista D as many of you went on my first video and are still asking that I didn't really show you how to use Ista D very well. So right now I'm gonna show you how you load Ista D up and how it scans your car. So obviously the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is double click on Ista D and open it. That's the first thing. <clears throat> now when it opens like this, you're gonna to wanna to go to operations you're gonna to wanna to go to read out vehicle data. Now, I read out vehicle data because obviously we're connected, but let me just give you a little hint. If you ever had a friend's car or you wanted to see what your car, what parts your car takes or how to fix it, you can use the VIN, the input the VIN here. And on the oldest of these, you used to be able to enter just half the VIN, the last seven digits, but now it requires you to set put in the whole lot of the VIN the whole VIN in total. And that will bring up every problem with your, like not just problems with your car, but every diagram to fix your car, every fuse. If you can't bother to connect to your car all the time, but you won't be able to read the faults. But I'll give you a brief description of your car, your model, what it was fitted with, and how you can repair it. We're just looking on the bench. Now, we're gonna go, and you can also just pick the car from here as well, from basic features. So you can pick the model, the name, the year, um, and it will give you everything for that year and it will know by the engine by what year it is. So that's another way. But the best way I usually do it is to read out the vehicle data. I only use VIN. If I'm working on the car and I need to know talk, talk specs or everything else like that while working on the bench. So now we go to read out vehicle data. We just wait for it. This will now load up the whole car as you can see. This is what my car is. This will now load all the VIN and everything. Now, if you take that VIN and took a picture of it, you could use that and I'll show you that prior in the video that when I capture that VIN, I can use that. Now, as you can see, no faults are on mine. Now, I'm gonna show you all the main functions of this today <clears throat> or what it can do and what you can do using this today and so forth. So, after this is loaded, we're gonna go, wanna go into control vehicle management but I'm going to show you the control unit list first so if I went to control unit list it will list me all my modules here and from here instead of going into vehicle management and vehicle information sorry and control unit tree like that and calling up the ECU functions I could just go to control unit list and call up the ECU functions and see what one they do so for instance if I was to go to like I've showed you in one of the previous videos, engine electronics and call up the ECU functions. It will give me everything I can do on that ECU, on the engine electronics side. And that goes for the same for the heads up display, for the body general module. You can trigger certain components to see if they're working. And you can monitor them to see if they're at the correct thresholds and they're meeting the correct <coughs> um, timing. Now, vehicle management, if you go into service functions, you can then see all the things that you can do to your car. So if you ever have problems with your car or you need to test a component or reset it, you can come here. So this is the first one for the steering lock. These are all to do with the steering lock when you get the steering lock light and your steering lock won't release. Engine electronics. So if we went to go to adjustment functions, that's to adjust the car. We've got CO adjustment, that's for the CO2. To adjust the amount of CO that it's giving out if the lamp sensor ain't reading right. Delete adaption variants, that will delete all the previous store data. As you know, BMW learn by the way you drive. So it will delete, so say if you bought a BMW and you didn't want it, and it's driving funny because of that last person probably treating it like rubbish and just pushing your foot down all the time and the gears are wrong, learn to delete adaptions. Now DME and CAS, that's another one. That's to do with the CAS interface, as you can see, the control unit. And that's to see if the CAS is fully functional. Fuel consumption display. That's another one. Now the idle speed. That you can use to up your idle speed, adjust it. If your idle's too low and it's causing hesitation, like most M52s do, um, there's a, a service information bulletin on KSD which shows you to adjust your idle if you're having too low idle problems. Now, learn valve tronic limit positions is another one. That is for the valve tronic motor. That one must be done every time you reset adaptions. Now, when you reset adaptions, you're going to want to reset the valve tronic limit positions because they they end up forgetting them on the engine as well because the eccentric shaft goes to another angle. So it ends up losing the valve tronic limit positions. Another thing is, whenever you program within KFP, 
you're always going to want to come into ISTD because you see WinCFP when you program will leave a lot of faults because when you program it loses communication to each module so for instance if I use WinCFP to flash the DME it will lose communication to the gearbox to the whole car and you have a load of CAN and communication faults you have to clear them now ISTD P usually when it flashes the whole car will clear the error codes as well at the same time because it's normal to get error codes so if you use WinCFP and you flash and you program it in your wide, you've had all these error codes, just clear them, they will go away. It's perfectly normal. Now the cooling system. Now for the ventilation cooling system, you can check that. For instance, the electric cooling pump. So that's just to check the pump's working at its maximum efficiency and that runs a check on it. OBD readiness. That just displays all the lambda sensors I'm making out all that they come ready at the right time. Um, and everything to do with, well, really, emissions test run so you can run a compression test but again you need to have your own compression tester that will just give you the limit but that doesn't test the compression for you and the internal engine pressure that's to do with the vacuum hoses the crankcase ventilation as you can see here now transmission control you've got adjustment that is what you go to display and reset adaption values so if you bought an e60 or any kind of e90 and it was and it's automatic and it's been towing a caravan the gear change is going to be very awful because they have learned to drive to change gear very quickly because of the amount of weight so you'd reset that and the same goes for mechatronic calibration you'd reset that if you changed i.e one of the solenoids as you can see there and then obviously you can check the oil level oil level adjustment so you can check that and then you can do reset adapt adaptions and functions so that's both of them which is the one we usually use it also tells you oil change for the gearbox. It show, shows you how to change the control, transmission control unit. Now, you, everyone goes about this, whether you should change the gearbox or whether you should not. Now, BMW wouldn't have this here if they thought you shouldn't change the oil on the BMW's gearboxes. For them to have that here shows that they recommend that you change the oil, but they're not going to tell you that as if you blow your gearbox, they think you're going to go to the dealer. Hence, they're going to make a lot of money from you. But uh, that could be there on the other hand for when they train the, the solenoids, when they let down the mechatronic body because sometimes they need to drain the oil to refill it. The chassis and suspension, and as you can see, run flat indicator, which I have, which I don't need to do because mine ain't on. Then you've got the steering angle sensor. That's another common problem. When you do anything to the suspension, the um, brake pad wear sensors, the ABS sensors, this will pop up all the time when you change it and it needs to be recalibrated, that angle sensor traction control system adjustment of the DSC sensor which is a lot of people saying that they have a common problem with them this one you can use to adjust the DSC sensor this one might cure your faults if you've got fault codes it might cure them for a bit until the problem comes back and get your light off at least now you've got the brake bleeding routine brake line mix up test um, brake bleeding routine for special cases or the steering angle sensor adjustment. Now that's again the same thing. If you change any of the sensors to do with the wheels, make sure you do your steering angle sensor. The same for the steering rack. Usually they've got a steering rack's got an electronic thing, an electronic ball that knows the position of the wheels. They must be readjusted. And especially if you have your wheel alignment done on your wheels, that will knock the steering angle adjustment out. Now on the body, you've got body general module. Calibration of the body control module. Now that's the, the the body general module, that's the main for the body for the alarm system. Now the car communication computer, you can add a tuner section, create a boot file, or to reset the HIP module, which you hardly ever need to do. You can do flexible diagnostic module, which is readout data. Heating and air conditioning. So you can check the evaporator control. And you can run in the protection for the AC compressor if you felt like you needed to, but usually nobody wants to do that. Otherwise, your air conditioning will hardly work. Your instrument cluster. You can see the system test nodes. So you can test your combi if it's not working properly. Lock-in and security function. So electric steering lock. Here we go. Reset interval EL3 frequency counter. Now, that one is at the top of the cast because... As BMW know, it's a common, common problem. So they don't want to pull it in a place down here where people will struggle to find it and think it's not there, especially technicians in BMW. So they put it right at the top because, it, as you know, it's a common problem. So they moved it to the top, but it's also there as well. Power window regulators. Initialize power window drive. So that will initialize all your power windows to the anti-trap feature. If you haven't got them on or they're playing up, you can just do that and it will do it for you. Remote key ignition key. So you can block and enable your keys. 
but you can also do a personalization number. That you don't really want to touch unless you're programming a key because that's for the numbers, the rolling codes for the CAS to do with the CAS. When you do a, it will give you all the rolling codes that what the key uses as every time you put the key in, the CAS and the DME produce a different code for the car. <clears throat> Slide and tilt sunroof. That's the initialize it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. The most network. So, the most ring and save configuration. That's to do with the most network, which hardly you'll ever need to touch, unless you're retrofitting. Navigation DVD lock, which a lot of you in America and the US will have that. Rain and light sensor, initialize the rain and light, light sensor. That's for if the lights turn on too quick, the rain sensor ain't working properly, you would use that. So automatic of the rain sensor and lights. Safety system, the read the coding data. That's all to do with the airbags. Now, you don't want to really, really be playing back with them. The telecommunications, the TCU, telemax control unit. That resets the BMW Assist, which, as you know, none of us have got, as that's only limited for four to five years, and that ends. Voltage supply. Now, with this, this is all to do with the IBS sensor. Now, you can activate the rest state, where the power down command, where the car will go to sleep. So, if your car's staying awake and you're having battery drainage, you'll use voltage supply. You can also use waking up the vehicle, wake up analysis. So we'll check what the, what is waking up the vehicle when it's trying to go to sleep and what's keeping it awake. The standby current, you can evaluate the closed circuit current monitoring. So you will see if something opens up and starts waking the car up, which is a good thing because I did have an E60 before where everything in the car was perfect, but something was keeping the car awake, which was not letting the disavow flat shut, which caused, caused a constant buzzing, keeping the car awake. It ended up being the combi at fault. Now the battery, evaluating the battery state of charge and then you can register battery replacement, which a lot of you need. So that one's there. Maintenance and pre-delivery check. Right, this is all to do with your iDrive and all your service reset. So if you wanna reset all your service lights, you'll come into CBS correction and CBS correction vehicle data. Or you're just going to CBS reset and reset every single one at one time with the CBS reset. Now enabling navigation map. That's really for CIC. You don't need to automatically enable it as it's already enabled anyway. Transport mode, well, none of the cars will be still in transport mode otherwise the cars wouldn't be running to this day. Check control messages. So you'd come here if you've got check control messages on your dash that you don't know. That's the alarm activation. Remote door unlock triggering. The software versions. And the vehicle electrical system in identification. Now, the rest of it is BMW Group Mobile Service, so engine compartment, passenger, this is really not needed, and the tele-service communications, that'll be your Bluetooth. So, the next one you want to go to is troubleshooting. Now, troubleshooting, if you go into troubleshooting, then you to, or you go into repair and maintenance, troubleshooting will bring you up fault patterns. So, what you can do here is pick what your fault is, from a list of things, so if you put a flaps and door, so if you was to go command it fault pattern, pick the engine, and you was to pick crankcase, put that in to there, and then it will calculate a test plan and tell you, you can find the exact fault of your car, so say if you're kind of throwing a fault code, but you can feel like, for instance, a rough idle, you'd go into wherever the idling is, so you'd go into, or for instance, let's just go into Valvetronic, and you do Valvetronic adjuster operation, Valvetronic eccentric shaft, Valvetronic other, Valvetronic immediate lever gate. So you can pick them and they will tell you the exact problem, what's going on there. Function structure is another one. This one lets you go to engine electronics and it can see all the current fault patterns. As you can see on the car, you can see all the current fault consumption higher than expected. Correct reset. Sorry about that, I jumped. Correct reset of engine oil service not possible. Incorrect oil level warning. Lack of power. Total failure of the brake power assistance. Vacuum supply. That one is usually due to water getting in the vacuum supply of the brake power assistance. Um, because a lot of water gets into the into the well there underneath the pollen filter housing and you need to drain it because the plugs need to be pulled. Another common problem. So as you can see, there's a lot of information here on this today. The repair and maintenance side, I think, shows you every step-by-step -step how to repair, basically, the whole car. You can strip the whole car bolt by bolt and repair it bit by bit. 
it shows you everything you need. So if I was to go into InGym, for instance, it will search everything to do with the InGym, but then it will also let you see, let you see everything else that you need to do with your engine. So, for instance, engine block, because obviously it's taking a bit long to load that one up. So there you go. If I go to the engine block, and still in the crankcase, it will show you on the AZD all the torque specs and everything for the engine block. So as you can see, it will show you all the torque specs. So it will show you how to re even repair the car if needed as well. So when you go to a fault on your car, for instance, let me just show you quickly. If I was to go to vehicle information. And then we go to control unit tree. And we do display fault memory. The IHK is here. So when you get faults, the first thing you're going to want to do in ISTA D when you get a load of faults here is calculate test plan. Because the test plan will tell you everything that's needed. You see, as it says, automatic air recir recirculation sensors, if you don't know what it is. Then you'll click display. And usually you can just display all down the bottom. So it will show, show complete. The control unit supplies a voltage of 5 volts to the automatic recirculation air sensor. Voltage by sensor 4.9. So that means the sensor is faulty. So straight away it will tell you what the fault is. Without you having to dig around, thinking it's this, thinking it's that. So, as you can see, that will show me that my sensor is faulty. Which I already know is faulty, but I was just showing you guys how you use the test plan to configure when a component's failed. ISTA D does all that for you. You do not need to worry about looking for it, making sure it's that. It will tell you. It will tell you if a, a thing, something's unplugged or if the sensor's faulty. Usually, if the sensor's unplugged, you'll get signal or plausibility. Workshop operating instructions. This is all to do with the special tools that BMW use. All the wheel alignment, how they set up the wheel alignment. This all does with the operating fluid. So, for instance, if you wanted to know what oil you, your car uses from factory, you can check all the oils here and everything else that there is to know about your car. Um, ISTA D is a very, very detailed program that, like I say, the dealers use for this reason. Um, as you'll probably have seen as well, you've got software update here. Now, I'm just going to explain that quickly. On the newest version of ISTA D, if you get the PSDZ files, you can do software updates, yes. And you can also do retrofitting, which you'll see here. You can do everything. But this is only limited to the F10s and up. You cannot use this software for updates for E60 and beneath. And that is because you can use WinKFP. You do not ever have to update on A60, on A90, every single module. You will get no change. The only changes you will realize is the fuel pump, the DME, and the gearbox. They're the only three modules you really have to update that you're gonna notice the difference. Anything else, the iDrive doesn't change, the go all the body modules, you're never gonna know the difference, nothing. So really, the F10s, they have to be updated all together. But the good thing is, if you've, got, if you've got an E60, just use WinKFP. It's a lot easier and more quicker. With this, you'll have to update the whole car. And this is from F10 up only. It will not do cars below that. Um, I think that's about it, guys. I think I've covered probably everything you need to know. If there is anything else you need to know regarding this today, please let me know. And I will get a video up ASAP for you to show you all the basics with this today. If you get stuck, please leave a comment in my box. Um... I'm gonna please check out Nathan's channel as well. I know most of you are coming from Nathan's channel, but please check out Nathan's BMW workshop as he's been promoting me and highly and helping me try and get monetized as quick as possible. Um, thanks for all watching. I hope you have enjoyed my video. Um, BMW Dr. Dean out here, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe my videos, and I'll be making more videos as as we go along.